Kim Wei Guo. So welcome. Uh, welcome to the Australia Awards um, information session. So um, we are the team from the Australian Embassy here in uh, Port Bay FSM. So uh, thank you College of Mike and Nisha for um, allowing us to do this session for our dear students and probably like future um, Australian Award Scholar. So welcome everyone and for those who are viewing online, welcome to our session. So um, I hope uh, you will have like a meaningful um, information later on um, after the session. Um, okay, so welcome. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Rowan Kabakungan. I'm the Assistant Program Manager uh, for uh, Australian Embassy. And along with me, uh, with the team, um, is uh, Ms. Rochelle Wood. Shall we please here? Yes. Our second secretary and console. And also we have Ms. Kenya Rickin. She's over there. Um, she's our senior program manager. Um, and also we have um, Mr. Jeremy Snoket. Is at the back? Have some way there. Um, he's our um, public affairs and research officer. So we're are the team who is actually coordinating, managing the Australian Awards scholarships here in Australian Embassy FSM. Okay. So again, um, welcome everyone. So um, today, so we'll just go over through um, what is Australian Awards and what is this great study opportunity for for the FSM citizens. So first, we'll talk about um, why choose Australia Award scholarships, um, the benefits, the entitlements, um, the top universities in the Pacific and in Australia. And then next, what are the Australia's expectations um, as a scholarship sponsor? So the competitive process of the application, what are we looking for um, on the students? or the applicants. So did they consider their degree? Um, is it the country's priority? So, and then did they, they do a thorough research on the study uh, field that they wanted to take? Or even, you know, the institution itself? And also, have they thought of, you know, thinking about contributing to um, the development of FSM? And also how? We're going to talk about how to apply for the scholarship. I bet all of you here are very curious on, you know, how to lodge in your applications. Um, and who are eligible to apply? Are you considered to be one of the uh, future scholars? Okay. And just to answer other questions about application process. So we're going to talk about here later on. And also, we are very, very honored today. Um, to be joined by some of the Australia Awards alumni. Um, and then we'll have the chance later to get to know them, hear their experiences during their study years in the Pacific and in Australia. I just want to you know, introduce briefly. So we have, of course, Ms. Lucille Abyss Overhawk, right over there. So can we come away? So probably most of you know her here. So um, she is actually one of the Australia Awards alumni um, studied in Australia. So we'll hear more about her experience later. And also we have two um, gentlemen here. Uh, we have Christopher Segra <laughs> um, from uh, USB 2019 intake. And we also have a fresh graduate here, Mr. Harold Movic. Has some way. Yeah. So they're here. Thank you very much for joining us. So we'll hear more stories of them later on and their experience. Okay. Um, also, they will be on the question and answer um, portion. They will be the, the panel members uh, for that session, uh, for that part of the session, and then you can ask questions later on. Okay. They'll have the opportunity to do that. So don't go anywhere. So stay tuned. Okay. So without further ado, again, welcome. Um, to this Australia Award Scholarship Information Session. So we are happy to see you all here. Um, and for sure, you want to know how you know, to study um, in Australia and Pacific, so how, how we'd be able to apply for this scholarship. Okay. 
All right. So uh, before we move on to, you know, what is Australia War Scholarship, I'm going to pass the mic over to our dear um, Second Secretary and Consul, Ms. Rochelle Wood, to uh, briefly share a few words um, about Australia War. Thank you, Rowan. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Casililia Mayenko. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I've been practicing. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today and those online as well. Um, this is, you know, for us, it's a really great opportunity to, um, to talk about this incredible opportunity uh, for a scholarship, not just to Australia, but also to the Pacific. Um, we have a few things to run through today. Um, I know that uh, it can be quite daunting to apply for scholarships, um, but hopefully we'll be able to walk you through all the various steps so you understand when you're submitting the application this, this year. So I'm sure you guys have already checked, but um, our round closes on the 30th of April. So we've got a couple of weeks um, to submit your application. Um, so, Rowan will, will definitely go through one by one, but I guess what, what's really important for us in um, talking to you guys today is it's really important that we find students who, who really want this scholarship. They're really interested and want to um, experience not just a certificate, not just obtaining a certificate, but actually wants that international experience to meet a network with new people from around the world. Um, especially in Australia, we attract from people throughout Asia, from across the Pacific, Middle East. Um, it's not just about your education, but actually the life experiences that you will gain um, during your scholarship uh, experience. And of course, the qualification. You know, we, we offer these scholarship opportunities because we want to help um, different countries with their development, uh, the development of their countries. And we look to you as uh, future leaders to contribute to that agenda. Um, so this is why we're here um, today uh, to find these aspiring leaders to join our alumni in the future. So uh, I just wanna acknowledge as well and thank our alumni who are here today. Uh, you'll be able to share some of the experiences that you've had and hopefully talk through where you're, you know, where you see the future and tell us a little bit about the fun things that happen and some of the scary things that also happen to you while in scholarship because, you know, this is part of life and this will be your journey, hopefully. So thank you so much for your time today. I'll hand it over to Rowan. Thanks. Thank you, Rochelle, for that very inspiring message. So um, we'll go over now to the session, okay? So Australia Awards are um, transformational scholarships for international students like you, know, like you in the future. So it's funded by the Australian government and this has been proven um, by the Australia Awards alumni in FSM. So who are now leaders on their different sectors working and serving towards the development of the FSM. Um, Australia Awards team are looking for individuals who are committed, um, resilient, and have a vision to be successful on their chosen field of study and determined to return to FSM to help you know, their country. <clears throat> so Australia Awards actually allow in interested individuals to study undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in Australia or Pacific institutions. So why do we choose Australian Award Australia Awards scholarships? So <clears throat> I'm just gonna give you a little background um, about Australia Awards uh, scholarships here in FSM. So Australia Awards is one of the longest running scholarship programs offered by the Australian government to FSM citizens. So it's just like one of those scholarship programs. And then partnered institutions like University of Melbourne and Monash University are included in the top 50 list of world university ranking in 2024. So this is based on times higher education. And then our partner Pacific institutions such as Fiji National University and University of South Pacific have produced um, successful graduates from FSM 
under the AAPS program or the Australia Award Specific Scholarship. So they are from the different fields such as health, law, engineering, commerce, information technology, and a lot more. And then these institutions have educational facilities that are well equipped, uh, well established academic programs and activities for the students. They have safe learning environment, they have those facilities, and also dedicated university um, staff and faculties to assist specifically the Australia Award students. So those are like the pluses for being on Australia Awards scholarship program, okay? So here in FSM, um, okay, so there's two types of Australia Awards scholarships um, that's offered to FSM citizens. So the first one is Australia Awards Scholarships, or what we call AAS. So this is offered for um, individuals who would like to study um, in Australia for postgraduate, so like a master's, master's degree on any Australian university. And later on, we'll introduce you to the uh, a new um, field of study that is offered by um, one of the Australian institutions. Um, which is the aviation management. So we'll uh, give you some more information about that later on. And of course, this is very famous to you know um, COM students who are taking two-year courses here at the moment. So if they want to pursue a bachelor's uh, degree, um, so most of you are applying for the Australia Award Specific Scholarship. So this is the program offered for undergraduate students. Um, that would like to take undergraduate and postgraduate studies in Pacific institutions, such as Fiji, Vanuatu, Samoa, and Papua New Guinea. So we'll talk more about that um, in a few minutes. All right, so what does Australia Award Scholarship support? Okay, so if you, if you will be um, awarded um, for this scholarship, you are entitled for full tuition fees. So if you have like a five, four year, five year degree program, the entire study period is fully covered for your tuition fees. Um, also, your uh, the cost related to going to the study country and also coming back, it's also covered by the Australia Awards. Um, also, some of the visa fees, um, you're also gonna have um, entitlement for the stipend, a bi-weekly stipend, or the allowance. Um, you also have um, what we call establishment allowance. So when you get to your study country, you'll be able to receive an establishment allowance allowance to be able to you know, um, sustain you for, like example, um, toiletries or textbooks and all of that. Also, when you finish your, co uh, your study or your field of study, you also have the completion travel, um, and also other supplementary academic fees. Okay. So isn't it exciting, right? Like you're not really gonna spend, you know, money on your study. So think about that. Okay. All right, and of course, since of the uh, most of the programs here at the college um, are two-year programs. So to earn an associate degree. So the Australia Award supports and invites aspiring students who wish to continue their studies and earn bachelor's degree to prestigious universities in the Pacific. So this is the Australia Awards uh, Pacific Scholarship or the AAPS. Um, so basically these are, um, these are the universities that are covered under the AAPS. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, University of South Pacific, Fiji National University, University of Papua New Guinea, um, and also we have the campuses um, in Vanuatu and Samoa for USP. Um, so this is actually, these are the partner institutions under the Australia Award Specific Scholarships. So later on, we're also gonna give you some more information about um, the scholarship opportunity to study or earn your bachelor's degree 
or graduate certificate in aviation management for those who are thinking to be on the aviation field. Um, but this opportunity will be studying in Australia. Okay, so we'll discuss more about that later on. Okay, so how am I be eligible for Australia Award specific scholarship? So let's uh, just go over to the general eligibility criteria. So first, you have to be 18 years of age um, by the time the scholarship starts. So this round, this application round, is for the 2025 um, academic year. So if you are 18 years above by the time the, scholar, uh, the, the, the classes starts or the scholarship commences, you should be like 18 years above, okay? Um, the next one, you have to be an FSM citizen and applying scholarship in FSM. So this is very important because um, of course, some of the individuals here are on a citizenship. So we have the question before, where, what if um, I'm carrying dual citizenship? So as long as the other citizenship is FSM, and you have a proof um, or a documentary evidence here that you're an FSM citizen, then you're eligible to apply for the scholarship. Okay? And you have to be in FSM uh, when you submit your application. Because by the time um, the committee will review the application. Um, we will call you actually and verify if you will be in FSM. Okay. Um, next, you have completed an associate degree or earned two year equivalent college years by the time of submission of application. So it's not withdrawn or terminated or dropped the courses. Okay. And then next, you are not an Australian resident or entitled to get an Australian citizenship or even not engaged or married to an Australian. Um, and next, also not bearing any other scholarship at the same time. And have not an Australian scholarship two years before starting Australia Award Scholarship. So these are just the general eligibility that uh, we would like to share with you because there, these are some, mostly are the basic questions that we receive from the applicants. Um, and also, sorry, lastly, you have to meet the immigration requirements of uh, the study country. So if you're um, studying in Fiji, um, in Australia, you have to look into the immigration requirements too. All right, and for more information about you know, the policy that would involve Australia Award Scholarship, I think we welcome. <laughs> uh, please uh, feel free to browse the internet and search for Australia Awards Pacific um, or Australia Award Scholarship Policy Handbook, and it will redirect you to that um, reference material. Okay. All right. Next slide. Okay. So, what are the other um, eligibility criteria that we're looking for for the applicants? So, for this um, for this section or for this slide. I will talk about the other requirements uh, that you have to consider when applying for the scholarship. So for example, um, for the Pacific one, the AAPS, so if you're planning to take um, uh, a degree, a bachelor's degree um, in FNU or Fiji National University, so most of our health programs or scholars are in there. So these are some of the um, specific requirements that you have to um, note when you are applying for Fiji National University. So first, um, an associate degree with minimum of 3.0 GPA. This is your um, your end uh, of school year GPA or your two year program. So that's actually for USP and UPNG undergraduate programs. Um, and then for uh, FNU, sorry, the first one is for USP. The second one is um, if you're planning to take Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, uh, or what we call MBBS at FNU, so you have to um, have a GPA of 3.5, okay, by the time of the application. And it should be like Associate Degree in Health Careers Opportunity Program, or HCOP. Anyone here who's taking HCOP? Anyone? 
Okay, there's, so there are a few ones. So if you're planning to take this course, the MBBS program, then um, just take note of the GPA, okay? And then of course, other health-related courses, such as um, dentistry, um, medical technology. So you have to have an associate degree in HCOP with a minimum of 3.0 GPA. Anyone here who's interested for health courses? Raise your hand. It's one of you. Okay, there. You can see some hands at the back. So that's good. All right. Um, and other non-medical related studies? Anyone who's interested? Okay. So mostly, probably, most of you are um, going to consider that. Okay. And then for postgraduate degrees, you can also take master, uh, master's degree program or postgraduate diploma um, at these specific institutions, but uh, for the requirements, you have to have a bachelor's degree and with at least three, work, three years work experience on the related field. So we have a few um, uh, students right now who's taking master's degree and postgraduate diploma um, in the Pacific. So you can also take that, um, your postgraduate degree um, in the Pacific Institution. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, this next slide, we're just, um, we're just trying to um, inform that Australia Awards also um, encourage women, people with disability, and other marginalized groups to apply for Australia Awards. So if you claim yourself uh, that you have a disability, um, there's actually um, an additional support that Australia Awards uh, would be, you know, uh, support you uh, during your studies. Like, for example, um, any assistive devices, so um, also care for disability package, those kind of support are also offered under Australia Awards. Okay, All right. okay so this next slide is um, just show you some photos for USB and FNU. Um, these are just the participating institutions in the Pacific. So here we have, of course, PNG, um, USB, of course we have the FNU. Um, okay. And then these slides are just showing you some of the courses available under these institutions, okay? So um, one of our alumni, uh, two of our alumni here are graduates from USB. Yeah, we have Harold and Chris. So uh, they're from, they attended school in Laukala campus. Yeah. So most of the um, bachelor's degree, a uh, bachelor of arts and sciences are offered there. Okay. And then for, if you're taking, or if you're planning to take law, bachelor of laws, uh, most of our students are I'm actually uh, deployed in uh, the Vanuatu campus. Okay? So it's at the Emalus campus. Um, and also the, the next program after taking Bachelor of Laws, which is the Professional Diploma in Legal Practice, you have an option to go to um, Fiji campus or still want to continue at Vanuatu campus. Sometimes it depends on the avail availability of the instructors too. And also, um, if you want to take a Bachelor of Agriculture or Masters of Agriculture, um, so most of the students go to Samoa campus or the Alafua. Okay. Okay. Of course, we have Fiji National University where most of our um, health-related um, degree or programs are in there. Our students are in there. So these are the offered um, study programs. So if you want to know more information about um, the degrees offered for the universities, please feel free to visit their websites. Um, you have tons of information over there. Um, and also, you have to consider or look into the prerequisites of the programs because sometimes um, they require uh, some pre-admission requirements, okay? So you have to think about that. And most of our applicants, actually, we tell them to do a re research first about the study program. Like, is this something that you really want to take, okay?
Because sometimes, oh, I want to take medicine. But at the end, you know, you will end up saying, oh, I have a change of heart. So try to think, do some more research, you know, because this is your opportunity to really go into um, your chosen uh, field of study and, you know, be able to um, finish up that degree um, for, this, for, for such institutions, okay? And also, um, in applying for the scholarship, the Australia Award Scholarship, you are given a chance to um, put up your uh, preference of studies up to, I think, four or five uh, course preference, okay? But of course, please make sure that your first choice um, will be, you know, your first choice or your, your chosen um, field of study, okay? Okay, so this is just some of the courses at Papua New Guinea. So they have various um, field of study offered. Okay, all right, so that's about the Australia Award Specific Scholarship. Um, if you have any questions later on, I'll just keep it for now and then we'll have the question and answer um, portion on the last part of this session. Okay. All right, so this next slide will talk about Australia Award Scholarships uh, program, which is, you know, this is a study opportunity um, to Australia or to any of the Australian university. So this is actually offered to those individuals, FSM citizens, who would like to take their master's degree um, and be able to study to Australia. So these are our participating institutions. Um, so from University of Sydney, University of South Wales, uh, we have the Monash University, University of Melbourne. Um, and later on, uh, we'll also have the opportunity to hear the stories uh, from our one of our dear alumni who's here, uh, which is Dr. Lucille. So she studied in Australia a uh, few years ago, but she would be able to give you some idea on um, you know, the life and experience of being an, uh, um, an international student um, in Australia, okay? Right. Okay, so here's what um, I was telling earlier, you know, for those who are interested in the aviation field, um, this is actually a new um, study program that Australia Awards is now um, putting up to, you know, to the participating countries. So Australia Awards Scholarship now offers Bachelor of Aviation Management. So this is about two years, it's a fast track study program, and also a graduate certificate of aviation management, which only takes you know about six months. So for the eligibility of um, this program, again, we go back to the general eligibility, which we still um, encourage applicants who have um, two year college degree or equivalent, two years college years equivalent, to apply for the said uh, program. Um, and also for the 2025 intake, um, so the Australia Awards will be um, giving out like one for each uh, for this for these courses for the successful um, awardee. Okay. All right. Anyone here who's interested for aviation management course? Or maybe a relative of you that you would like to, you know, um, at least to invite to apply for this scholarship. But anyway, spread the word, okay? Um, this is a great opportunity to for uh, for those interested individuals. All right. So here's the exciting part. So how to apply? Okay. So everything is done online. Okay. So um, it's through our um, application portal called Oasis. So it's the Online Australia Award Scholarship Information System. So in completing your application form, um, you have to invest your time. Take, you know, so we, we only have like three weeks from now before the end of the application. Application period, which is on the 30th of April. Um, and, you know, don't rush your application. Take some time to read the questions, answer the questions, and then um, before you submit your application, okay? So the website for Oasis is this one. So HTTPS or www.oasis.tfat.gov.au. So take note of that. 
Um, and if you're a new um, scholarship applicant, um, you have to actually create an account. So there will be instructions um, on that website too on how to create an account. But if you're uh, if you have applied before and you wanted to try it again, um, you can just use your previous account to log in. Okay. Um, and then once you log in, we advise that you complete all the sections and the questions. Don't miss out anything. And also, there's actually a guide, a user guide on how to complete the application. You just need to go to this uh, to this website, um, www.dfat.gov.au, um, and then under that there will be an Oasis. Find that link under Oasis Applicant User Guide. So it's a PDF file where it will show you how to navigate the Oasis portal. Okay, again. So this is in red, application deadline is on 30th of April, so end of this month, 11.59 p.m. point play time, okay? So for those um, who are watching from the other states, so please take note of the time zone, okay? All right. Okay, so what else are needed for applying for the scholarship? So we encourage you to take note of this um, required supporting documents for your application because it will ask on um, the OASIS portal. You have to upload this doc the copy of this document. So take time to scan all these uh, this, uh, documents or certificates, okay? So first we have the birth certificate. So of course to validate whether you're an FSM citizen, uh, passport bio, uh, bio page copy, and then, of course, certified uh, copies of academics, academics transcripts, high school and college. So, uh, Miss, what if um, I'm still taking my, you know, I'm still finishing up my two-year program? So you can request for the unofficial, uh, unofficial transcript. Um, I believe COM um, can issue that, and then just upload it on Oasis, okay? And then you can have the um, the official transcript later on. Um, to submit to our office. And then diplomas, certificates of achievement. Um, for the others, uh, this is actually applicable for um, Australia Awards scholarships or those who are interested to apply for um, study in Australia because most of the Australian institutions, um, you will be requiring to submit English language test results like IELTS, TOEFL, um, and also you will be asked for a CV uh, or resume um, and also other tertiary certificates um, for you to be eligible for the Australia Awards Scholarship. But for the Pacific, you can just tick off like the, other, the first four, okay? All right. All right, so this slide is just to give you an overview of the timeline of the Australia Awards Scholarship um, application stage. So we open up the application round in February and then um, it's going to be closing on April 30th this month um, and then by June, uh, by May actually we will going to be start reviewing the applications and then by June, probably sometime in June or end of June, we will be shortlisting um, candidates for interviews. And then by July, I will have the interview starts. And then in August, awardees will be notified, okay? And then later on, if you will be notified, there will still, you know, follow-up um, documents that you have to submit. And then, but we will coordinate that one later on. But this is just an overview. There might be changes also or updates on our timeline, but somewhat this is the general timeline for the application stage, okay? All right. Okay, so for more information about Australia Awards scholarships, please feel free to visit our website. So it's fsm.embassy.gov.au or simply follow on